Okay, back to um, the protocol. Um, we've already gone through the word study pieces. We did that because of the hooking us up. So she's already done most of that. We talked about word sorts, slash and dash. Uh, there are a lot of other phonemic awareness activities that are available. Spot and dot, slide down sounds, spell by sound, pattern, meaning, and Latin and Greek derivations. Those are all part of the word study piece. <clears throat> then we have comprehension and vocabulary. There are, again, a lot of ways to work with, that, with those topics. Uh, graphic organizers, there's tons and tons of graphic organizers available. From Venn diagrams to story maps to, uh, well, the KWL charts and so on. There's an activity called All Right, About Point. There's story mapping, reciprocal teaching, inquest, request, front loading, and vocabulary cards, plus tons more. As a reading specialist, when I went through that program, we got an enormous amount of, of activities. If you flip back a couple pages in your um, binder, you'll see a, a handout called Comprehension Strategies. And there I've typed out an explanation of several of these to make it more clear um, for those that maybe haven't heard of some of them before. Um, front loading, which is near the bottom, it's just what good reading teachers do. Before you read a story, before you read a story, you talk about the vocabulary in the story so they understand that. You, um, see if they have any background knowledge or other knowledge about the topic. Say you're reading a story about um, Alaska. Ask if anyone's been there. What do they know about Alaska? What things do they know already um, help them to build their foundation? And that's all called front loading. You're loading information in, <coughs> excuse me, uh, before you actually read the story. Um, Another one is called reciprocal questioning or request, and that's listed there. And that's where both student and teachers read the title and the first sentence of the introductory paragraph. And you look at any pictures or graphics that are there. Then the teacher asks the students to ask as many questions as they can about, that about what's there. And then they just continue, continue in doing that by two or three sentences until they get some information loaded into their minds about that particular topic and then you proceed. And it's a, a very clear explanation here, I hope. Story maps um, are also very helpful. There's many ways to do story maps. Um, here we go. And I have another handout that you can three-hole punch when you get home. But on the front is an example of a story map, and on the back is a KWL chart as well. Um, and here students um, put in the setting, time, place. It just helps you think about what the story's about, characters, the problem, and eventually how the problem was resolved. Um, I find that's a good way to work with book reports and short stories. Um, I'll talk in a few minutes about a book report format that we use in our high school program. It's a tic-tac-toe method and story mapping is part of that. Um, the next one is called All Write and that's where you've maybe read a story and you take a couple minutes and everybody takes those couple minutes and just writes whatever they remember from the story. Maybe all they remember is a couple character names or something, but when you first start doing that, they probably will have very little to write. But as you keep using that technique, um, you'll find that they'll have more and more to write. Do you use that Not often, but I do use it on occasion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it can be used with social studies, science as well. If you're working on a lesson, okay, yeah. let's all write what we remember. So that's part of the comprehension too. Uh, then we have inquest, which is investigative questioning. And here the teacher selects an interesting story. 
and the teacher suggests to students that they try to think of questions that they would like to ask a character in the story. They role play a news conference in which someone plays the character and the students assume the role of the investigative reporters and the students are directed to read on to the next point and repeat the interview process. It's just another way to attack a story. Uh, and then we have about point. This is a very simple one after they've read, silently read a certain section of a story or whatever. They are instructed to stop and say this section is about whatever it is and the point is whatever it is. It's just a different way to look at comprehension. Reciprocal teaching is one that I've used on occasion and I noticed that there was a um, YouTube on reciprocal teaching. But the way that works, um, I've, on the back page here, I've given you the, what would be on each of the index cards. So one of the cards says question, and they are to think of a question about a paragraph that they've all read silently. Another card says summarize, and if that's their card, they have to say what the main idea of that paragraph is or predict and make a prediction about what will happen next <clears throat> and clarify to make clear anything that was unclear in that paragraph. So the teacher chooses a story ahead of time, divides it into four parts. And you have a group of four students sitting around a table or whatever and each student gets a, a different card. They silently read the first section and then Someone will summarize, someone will predict, someone will clarify any questions that others have if they can, and then someone will ask a question. Then you switch cards so that you have a different goal as you read. If your goal was to summarize the first time, you're going to read that in a different way than if your goal is to predict what will happen next. And so you go around and do the four sections, and each time they have a different task to perform. And if you continue to do that a lot, the kids will um, think about what they're reading in different ways. Um, and I would suggest watching the YouTube on reciprocal teaching. That's very well done. And vocabulary cards. Um, in our high school program, I'm, we often take, um, we have three by five cards, and as the students are doing their oral assisted reading, or we can just pre-choose other vocab words, a vocabulary words is written on a card for each student. Maybe one or two a day, maybe some days none, it just depends. On the back of the card, the students in subsequent days are to write a sentence using that word correctly. And they get a point each time they do that correctly. Um, we usually keep the cards in like a three by five box with um, each student's kept separate from the others. So that in the off times, let's say there's three minutes before the bell rings, you could pull out somebody's cards and flash the cards, do they know the words? Talk about the definitions, so on and so forth. So it's kind of a time filler too. So that would be the vocabulary cards. Put those back there. And also in your um, binder is, is a KWL chart. And then the last sheet in that section, you'll see a, a page that says list three facts about the article, list one opinion. This is a worksheet that we incorporate with newspaper articles. So we'll find an article either from the sports page or the front page or wherever, something that might be of interest or not <laughs> to the students. And in our high school program, they do one newspaper article a week, which means that they have to read the article and answer the questions. And that's also a comprehension um, device. Kind of was born out of the fact that the MCA reading tests came into being a few years ago and students were asked questions about facts 
opinions, summaries, and so on. So we just kind of developed this to go along with that. And it seems to have helped quite a few students. So going back to here. Writing is another component of our program. And we spend 15 minutes a day doing a journal. And also in the, in the back, after the PowerPoint, you'll find a listing of journal topics that we've used in the past to give you an idea. But once they've done the spell by sound and the slash and dash and are ready to do more sentence writing and so on, they begin, and that's of course in the elementary, sentence writing that turns into paragraphs. Um, at the high school, we also try to work with not only narrative writing, but expository writing, how-tos, humorous, just different types of writing. Um, we work on the five paragraph essays. That is what the state writing test is based on. So you have an introductory paragraph, two or three supporting paragraphs, and a conclusion. And when they can do that well, they're more than likely going to pass the state writing test. And I must say, we've had some great success with, with that, working on this. Um, the six traits of writing, something else that I didn't get into the binder. <laughs> so I've um, got a handout. This, one of this side describes what um, an effective writer, what their writing will look like. On the back is a writing checklist. And then I'll also have her pass out the six traits of effective reader. That's you know, also helpful. And then we have the Phelps um, sentence writing strategy. And this again probably is used more with elementary age kids, but for junior and senior high school kids who are just writing basic, simple sentences, this is a way to help them expand those sentences. And this sheet is divided into columns. The first one says first, second, next, then, last, final, at last, later. The next column is which, how many, what kind, and who and what, and what are they doing, and for what, to what, to whom, and to what, when, where, and how. So just speaking that doesn't make much sense, but if you have a short sentence like the boy is kicking the ball, you can expand that by describing that boy a little more. You can expand that by where is he kicking it, so on and so forth. So you can start with a very simple, very simple sentence. And through a dialogue between you and the student, you can help them expand with adjectives, adverbs, etc. So um, you'll each get one of these. And on the back um, is a sample dialogue of how it could go. So. We will hand those. I'll keep you busy. <laughs> All right. Very good. Any questions about any of those items? As they transition out of the ITA alphabet, they're going to start to be doing more traditional spelling words in their writings and just an occasional word in ITA. And uh, eventually it'll be all traditional once they get the spelling patterns down.